Alex has two passions, gambling and wine. Mr. Charles Hodgkiss owns a castle and a cellar full of wine. His close friend, Alex, was desperate to see the wine cellar. His friend, Charles, tried to put him off, saying that it was a dungeon and not the sort of place to visit. However, the night was Halloween, 1948, and Alex arrived promptly at 7.30 for an evening of cards and, he hoped, delicious wine. Charles came running towards Alex. He apologised for only just arriving himself. Oh, sorry, dear boy, a problem with the damned car. <laughs> Must get it looked at. Let's go in, shall we? As dinner arrived, I asked the old butler, Jarvis, if the castle was haunted. Of course, sir, he said as he shakily brought out the first course. I bet I don't see a ghost tonight, Charles. I'm sure you won't, came his reply. Now for cards. Hmm? Bridge? asked Charles. Uh, not yet, I countered. First, the cellar. You mean the dungeon, <laughs> laughed Charles. We asked Jarvis to clear the table and we headed down to the room. A bit spooky, don't you think? asked Charles. I've never been in here at night before. Coward, I mocked. Look at all this lovely wine. Let's go, Alex. Seriously, I, I, I'm beginning to feel a little uneasy, Charles said. I could stay here all night. It wouldn't bother me at all, I boasted. Mm, I smell a bet in the air, Charles exclaimed. I bet you ten pounds that you won't stay the night alone in here. I smiled. <laughs> ten pounds? Are you sure you can afford it? Make it twenty, and you have yourself a bet. You're on, he said. Now, here are the terms. I shall bring you a jug of water. Then you will stay locked in here until breakfast tomorrow. You cannot come out until I let you out. It's 10 p.m. now, so that will be 10 hours. All right. If it becomes too much for you, you can knock on the door and I shall let you out and you will lose your bet. Understood? Easy, I scoffed. I don't need your water. I have all the wine I could wish for right here. Oh, now, now, dear boy, you cannot touch the wine. In fact, I don't trust you to leave it alone. I will have to chain you to the wall. <laughs> Just one leg. He chained my leg to the wall and told me that he had to run Jarvis to the railway station in Darlington. Uh, don't worry, it will only take me 20 minutes. Uh, when I return, I shall bring some wine from upstairs and the playing cards. No need for us to miss out on a game. I will keep you company for a while. With that, he left me here. I could hear him leaving the house and I heard Charles's car splutter into life. And then I settled in. The time was now 11 p.m. and no sign of Charles. <laughs> the swine, I thought. He's playing games with me. I'll give him something to think about when I see him. Midnight. I stood up and realised that I could not reach the door due to my leg being chained to the wall. <laughs> Charles, you bounder, where are you? 1.30 a.m. I fell asleep, the brandy and our meal taking its toll. When I awoke, I could hear birds' song and a distant church bell. It was 9.30 in the morning. I stood up and yelled. 
I win, you cad. Now, where is my breakfast? As morning turned to afternoon, and afternoon to evening, I realised something was horribly wrong. I died on the morning of the 23rd of November, 1948. In 1950, my body was discovered by men working for the council who had taken over the castle. I heard a historian talking of the terrible motor car accident which occurred on Halloween night in 1948, killing a man instantly, just a half a mile from here. The brakes in the car were faulty.